Hello guys and welcome to another replay cast. Today we're looking at the game in the ML2, the tier 9 Swedish heavy tank playing on Himmelsdorf. Tier 10 game with two RD in it, which should not be that big of a deal on Himmelsdorf, but we will live and see. Today's replay is all about making questionable plays, about uh, yeah, maybe not playing on your peak performance and trying to, you know, still win with, uh, with all of that going on. All right, so we start off by going the hill, which is what you should be doing in an Emil 2 on Himmelsdorf. Uh, the uncontrollable turret armor means that you're gonna have a good time on the hill unless you're gonna get RD'd. Uh, and one of their RDs is dead and the other one is on the left side and being spotted. So we might actually get away with this. Those of you who missed the uh, Emil 2 review uh, a couple of months back, uh, this tank is pretty much, uh, yeah, 5120. Uh, with impenetrable turret for standard ammo and way 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 worse gun handling pretty much every way also worse reload so you're kind of a, like a one trick pony here if your turret doesn't work your tank will most likely not work so this tank is really as good as your hull down position and this is a pretty good fucking hull down position so hopefully we can make uh, something out of this so here IS-7 first target, but 5120 is a bit more juicier with uh, uh, that lack of uh, armor. It is better shots for us. Nice of my teammate to fuck me over there by pushing my tank to the side, but we do keep this guy permatrack and he should be dead now. But yeah, thanks M103. Thanks, buddy. Anyways, back to reloading and with this tank the reloads can be quite painful. The reload between, uh, well, the magazine reload is over 30 seconds it it can really really be uh, annoying to play this at times i am gonna speed up parts of this video as this reload is just ridiculous uh anyways we're pushing up there are people behind us that could be sniping me but i am really pretty much hoping for the best here and um flanking these guys is really our way out of this uh mess the t49 coming in with that uh, derp gun and you know that's what that, that's the gun handling I was talking about. Really sucks to miss the first one. Uh, probably will not be able to kill him now, but hopefully our teammates can come in for the rescue. And that is exactly what happens. And here we are again reloading. Uh, this is a pretty shitty position for me. I can't really run away uh, and I really don't want to get shot too much. So I'm just chilling here and hoping that the rest of our team can deal with that 5A, which it seems that they can. And we have tucked ourselves in this corner nice and smooth so we can actually reload in peace and that actually ends up happening we did take that one uh, hit but overall it's uh, you know it could have been way worse for me all right so now the wz is crossing the middle of the open so obviously is my priority our shots have been landing pretty well today uh missed one on the 49 and one on the 5120 and uh, you know that's how you jinxed it i guess um two bounces on the one four in a pretty easy angle to pen him so that's rather unfortunate but he dies uh, pretty much immediately after so it is not a big deal and guess what we're reloading again so most of the time you want to use your reload time to relocate and find better positions so when you're loaded you can immediately immediately unload but so far in this game i mean everything has been around us so we have been able to unload literally the second we reload uh, so that's not really been a problem of this game the problem of this game has just been the lack of dpm the 37 second reload just prevents you from being very effective most of the time and now i could have done this better i'm pretty sure you could get this shot here uh if i just calculated it better if i guessed where the, this e1 would be going more but this is pretty pretty garbage angle for me there's not really much i can do to this guy here i mean Again, it, I was really close to being able to shoot him, so I could have definitely uh, got a better angle here to actually get a hit on him. And that would have gone a long way later in the game, but I uh, fuck up and don't do that. So, uh, yeah, our team is kind of falling apart. It's 11 and, well, 12 now, uh, and things are not looking too hot for us now. This 3090 is probably going to be a massive pain in the ass as well. We still have that 1-4 and the 1-3. I... Probably should pick a side and tr try to help uh, whoever I want out right now here and now but uh, instead uh, Instead I'm just trying to snipe from the hill which is probably the worst thing I could be doing But I missed my 1390 shot and realized that this is not a very effective play and move along uh, from that and now 
as I mentioned, the 3090 is going to be a massive pain in the ass, and the fact that we miss him there is uh, also very sad. M03 is mad. I could see why he would be. Uh, probably if I helped him out on that side, uh, we would have won that, and uh, and uh, probably won the game out of that as well, but uh, I figured I could be more useful at the base, but that really did not work out very well for me at all. Now, we know where the 3090 is, so let's feed him some damage. He seems like, you know, the kind of guy that deserves that. We should have either kept ourselves spotted or kept ourselves aiming. This is just feeding the 1390 here. That's really not what you should be doing. Plus, he also saw me driving away, so he can really, you know... He knows what I'm doing, and it's impossible for me to hit this shot. There's nothing I can do about it, uh, unless I kept myself exposed that entire time. Our 1 4 dies, and now it is a 1 versus 4. And it is a bit of a shit fest. They have an E1, they have that 1390. That 1390 probably is the biggest issue of them all for now. Um, E1 is also kind of annoying, because he can't clip me. And, uh, yeah, the T10 has around 1,000 hit points. So, overall, we're never going to win this game if we just get in there, get surrounded. We have a 37 or so second reload. So, the second we unload, we have to be able to either run away or be in, like, middle of fucked out nowhere where nobody else can get to us. So, that is the reason I'm not going to reset the cap right away. I need to isolate one of them or two of them, preferably, and then we can work from there. And, uh... I figure, you know, Emil is pretty good on the hill, so let's go to the hill, right? And one of them has started to cap. Uh, probably the E1 could be the 1390. Obviously, no way I could know. It could even be the T10 by this point, really. So, yeah, they're probably splitting up to try to look for me, which is exactly what I want. Um, it is really not smart in these endgame scenarios to split up against autoloaders like this one, like the Batchet, and you often see people throwing the games away by doing that. 3090 goes for me, uh, but we get lucky. And this is the start of the comeback. We really need that, that shot. If we don't get that shot, this game is over, because the guy knows where I am, uh, and they just cap, or, you know, I won't be able to really get back because of the 3090, but that was the shot that starts this comeback, and it was lucky as fuck. There's nothing really to deny there so still only one guy in the cap so we have to go for it there's only 40 seconds on the clock there as well so we're running out of time we're running out of ideas so we're just going to be pushing uh, the cap circle not really much to say here i mean this is literally all on their positioning and their ability to really hit my hull and if they do that i might be pretty fucked uh, it is the E1, we do get the proxy, which is a bit annoying, and we are going in. He actually misses the... well, no, he actually bounced the first shot. So did I, though. He tracks me with the second, we already used our repair kit, but he kind of fucked himself over by driving so close to me, he couldn't actually shoot my hull. I probably would have killed him there anyways, as after he bounced the first one, but uh, he definitely could have, could have ended me there, or at least done one shot of damage, which in the end would have been enough for their team and now we're just booking it out of there um sitting on another reload we really don't want to be uh chilling in the cap circle uh for too long there i know that the t10 has around uh one thousand hit points the e75 was a bit less healthy but he still wasn't the one shot unless i'm really lucky with the one shot so yeah i mean obviously we're going to be playing defensively there's no uh, question about that clearly they're winning so I don't really see a point for me to like try to hunt for them actively so instead I'm just waiting for them to push the cap circle I don't know why I was looking third person there I thought it was on my left I suppose that's really weird that he got in the cap from that angle but uh, anyways uh, we trade one bounce each and now I'm gonna pull off the ba good old bait and switch um, not really sure if it was even effective in this case, but uh, trying to fake the ways you're going, um, the way you're going, uh, is a very powerful play most of the time, because it kind of comes down to guessing in these scenarios anyways. And this time he pushes me, I push him. He does the one shot of damage, which really puts me in that uncomfortable one shot zone for everybody else involved in this game. But for that I do kill him, uh, which is the great advantage of an autoloader and now the last guy left no idea where he is chilling he really has not done anything for the last like four minutes or so and uh, the fact that they split up so badly trying to look for them uh, look for me hunt heard them really badly in this game uh 
really bad play from the enemy team. I'm not playing my best. I'm missing my shots. I'm making poor decisions and generally, you know, not having the greatest game ever. I'm just able to come back in this on the back of that ridiculously lucky shot on the 1390. And on the back of the, they are just too greedy and splitting up really poorly, uh, trying to hunt down an auto loader that has like an impenetrable turret. All right, so the next play is called push your little third teammate uh, to provide yourself with hull down cover. Really effective in uh, the Swedish heavies, really effective in uh, IS-7s, uh, and I guess now the Super Conqueror as well. Uh, the problem with this play is that he can actually see this guy moving on the map, and if he's smart, he will not drive in front of me. But, you know, he has been missing for four minutes or so, so I'm not really assuming anything here. He might have just been AFK, but he can see this guy moving. And uh, if you can see this guy moving, it's very likely that he's going to come behind me. But from, other, like, from my perspective, I really don't have much to lose. If I run into him and I don't have hull down cover, he just kills me. Because I know he's a bit above one shot, so it's always going to be a dodgy, uh, dodgy fight for me. So... Having this hull down cover or having any sort of cover for me here is a pretty, pretty good deal. And now we are going into the cap circle. Three minutes are remaining on the clock. If we don't spot it for like another minute, we probably need to make our way to their cap circle. Because he's probably camping somewhere or maybe just AFK. But here he comes. First shot, pretty inconsiderate for me to just go for his flat side instead of trying to track him. Because if I do get the tracking shot, he is done and uh, uh, that fight is over. But we still have three shots. Should be enough to kill an e 5 uh, It's not the greatest shot for an Emil in close range. Those shots can pen, but it was a bit too much on the on the left side of that little ear weak spot. And the next shot misses completely. The guy's doing a good job of his evasive maneuvers, but uh, in the end I have to take the the medal here for being a terrible shot. Uh, generally this game kind of can be summed up in this one fight. So we do get uh, we do get to outplay this guy. We position ourselves well but we shoot like a moron, make some poor decisions. Uh, we still have one shot left so we could just end it here and now but uh, where would be the fun in that? He, I probably could have also shot his hull there as he was over angling it quite badly. But I was choking. I don't really know what else is there to say. Uh, now we're trying to really just survive. I mean, never give up, never surrender, even if you play like a moron for, uh, you know, the last considerable amount of uh, time. He does miss first of his shots, so he has like two, maybe three more left, depending on how quickly he shoots after reloading. He finally eliminates the 1390 or whatever it was from the picture. So it is kind of a 101 now. And uh, instead of trying to go back behind the 1390, I go for the face hug because I know that he should have been loaded uh, there already. So uh, yeah, we go for that. And now he's trying to uh, go wide, but little do you know, buddy, I am already reloaded and I am too fast and too furious and you are dead. Uh, all right, so here's the end plate ace tanker 4350 experience with the double and the premium account defender and high caliber medals earned as well as 5408 damage done 662 assisted 1700 blocked by armor picked up four kills uh ended up getting 1450 base experience and uh, made 30 grand profit on top of that so a pretty pretty weird game for me. I was really not on top of my game. I was not hitting my shots and I was also quite useless for a really good period uh, in that game. I probably could have won that game much easier if I was there supporting that M103 or the WZ. But instead I, you know, did it the hard way. But uh, in the end we still get the victory. So it kind of still counts I guess. And I guess I get something to put on YouTube. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope to be back with another YouTube video sooner than a month uh, later. And I'll, you know, see you on the next one.